In this Blender tutorial I will show you how to create this Sims style interior. These are great for clearly showcasing the distribution of interior spaces and interior design. I personally enjoy creating and studying different variations of interior designs, which I later use as my personal catalog. You can download the complete project files and support the channel on my Patreon. I'm also sharing some free textures I created during this tutorial, so go grab them and let's get started. As usual in my tutorials, I will focus on the shaders and lighting of the scene. However, I will first quickly show you the simple modeling process. I mostly use extra lock cuts and a lot of snapping. There are plenty of great modeling tutorials out there. But practice is key to quickly understanding where to cut and extrude to build your spaces. Now let's move on to placing the camera. Set it to orthographic mode. The height of the camera doesn't matter, as you will adjust the orthographic scale value to set how near or far it is from the scene. Using an empty object linked to the camera tracking, I will position the camera so that this blue line is at 45 degrees, giving us a perfect 45 degree orthographic view. Let's set up cycles as usual. I will add some lights, mainly two coming from the windows. I will make them slightly bluish to give the sense of daylight, and later I will add some warm lights for color contrast. I'm using some assets from this website, which are high quality and have a license that allows you to use, modify and redistribute them. I will just bring in the base color, roughness and normal maps. Always make sure your architectural models have correct UAVs. Here I'm selecting the Q projection and setting this number to 1, meaning any texture I use will measure 1 meter on this object. Since I know my texture measures 4 meters in the real world, I will divide 1 by 4 with this nose to scale the texture correctly on the model. Now I will play with these values until I find the look I like. I'm creating simple white and black materials for the walls and applying the materials to the white borders. I'm removing reflections by setting this value to 1. Next, I will select this wall and separate it from the object. Now I can move it to a new collection I will call Excluded. Then I will select the main lights and set them to light link with the other collection, so only objects inside that collection will receive light from the selected light. I'm doing this to prevent light from hitting the inner wall that is painted black. Now it's time to add a plane as a background for the image. Don't forget to apply scale to avoid future issues with UV mapping. I will move the plane slightly below the room to prevent overlapping issues. Let's create the UAB for this plane and remember to set the cube size to 1. For the shaders, I want a square pattern. I'm choosing UAB mapping so each square will now be 1 meter in size. I will adjust the colors now. I could like a less uniform color, so I will use the noise texture. With the color ramp, I can tweak the colors to darker and lighter shades of green. I will also add the plane to the excluded lights collection. Now I'm bringing in all the furniture I have selected for this scene, but this is the fun part where you can try different designs. And remember, many of these textures are free to download from my Patreon. 
I will start with the curtains. Don't worry, I will break down the materials. Here are the nodes for the curtains. First, connect the principal shader to the material output, and then add a cloth texture to the base color. Use these nodes to control the texture scale. To brighten the texture, I will use this node. The interesting part of using a black and white cloth texture map is that we can add a color mix node set to overlay with the texture map connected to the B inlet and any color to the A inlet. Now you can create fabrics in any color you like, just make sure to set this factor value to 1. Lastly, connect a mixed shading node and a translucent shader. You can adjust this factor to control the curtain's translucency. Also, connect the texture map to the base color of the translucent shader. Let's add part of the living room furniture. The carpet is simple. Just find a texture you like and ensure the UV mapping fits. The same technique is used for the painting. For the sofa, let's select the curtain fabric material I just created. Make it unique by pressing here and then modify it by removing the mix shader with the translucent node and adding some sheer reflections to mimic the reflection from tiny fabric fibers. I will adjust the values until I'm happy with the look. This is a basic metallic material. Oh, I forgot the sofa legs, so let's check the wood material in a second. For the fabric of this armchair, I'm using the shade that we just created. The wood material is straightforward. With a texture map for the face color, a hue saturation value node, and a normal map. For the marble, I just use one texture and set the roughness very low. I adjusted the texture scale a bit with a UV mapping. Now let's bring in the rest of the furniture. We created this texture in a previous tutorial. It's a base color, a normal map and an alpha map, plus hue saturation and value adjustment for the wood color. The table and chairs use the fabric and wood materials we already created. Now I will add warm interior lights to make the scene more interesting. I'm adjusting the fabric color because the warm light made it look too yellow. I'm also using light linking for just the main scene, excluding the excluded collection. I set the rendering values like this. Oh. One more detail before rendering. I want to suggest a door by adding one here. Now we are ready for the final render. Let me know in the comments if you tried this and if you could like to see more dioramas like this. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please like, subscribe, visit my Patreon and my Instagram showcasing my works for clients. Thanks.